I once spent some time with these, the WF-1000 XM3s, which are a premium, truly wireless, active noise cancelling in-ear monitor from Sony. But today's video is not about these, it's about these. The WF XB 700s. XB stands for extra bass. And they're $100 cheaper. What do you think about that? <sighs> Let's see if the expensive ones suck $100 less than these. Come on, baby. I feel like already the packaging is more austere than this one. And here it is. Whoa, very lightweight. Plastic AF. Not completely opaque. And here they are, these are bigger. These are definitely bigger than the XM3s. But they're not huge. Holy, these are isolating. My voice sounds weird even. They're like earplugs almost. These do not have active noise canceling. The isolation that you get when you put them in is all you're getting, but that might be enough. The other thing is that these don't have any capacitive touch. They don't swipe, they don't have gestures. They're not capacitive. Each has a button. On the right button, you can play and pause. That's a single tap. You can double tap for next. You can triple tap for previous. You can hold for the virtual assistant. In my case, that's gonna be Google Assistant because I'm a Android boy, baby. And then on the left side, that's your volume. You click it to increment in steps going up, louder and louder, and you hold it for continuous volume going down. So. One stepped while one's continuous is a bit weird, but it's easy to get used to. You just hold it until it's as quiet as you want, and then you let it go. So let's see how it actually works with music when I pair it to my phone. 100% battery, rock and roll. Uh, one of the differences between these puppies and the more expensive premium counterpart is battery life. These ones advertise 18 hours of battery life, whereas the more expensive ones advertise 24 hours. Now that's not just on one go from the earbuds, that's including the charge case. Interestingly, these ones advertise a longer playtime from the earbud itself. They say nine hours from the earbuds themselves, whereas the XM3s advertise six hours. Might as well just open these up. You can already see the packaging is quite a bit more involved, but here we go. The charge case is quite a bit bigger between these two. Um, it's obviously slicker looking, it's got this nice click. This one you're not really gonna be able to fidget with. But you can see the size difference. This has a way bigger battery, I think, because it provides three full charges to the headphones. So that's three six hour charges, plus whatever you can hold on the headphones or a total of 24. Whereas this one, I think is only 100 milliamp hours. So you just get one additional charge. So nine hours per charge. Total 18. Okay, let's play some music. Right after this message from our sponsor, Honey. Honey is the free shopping tool that finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online at specific sites. Honey works on over 30,000 stores, including Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, Walmart, and many more. It's free and installs in just two clicks, literally two clicks. Honey gets a small commission from sites where Honey saves you money, so it's free for you and nothing fishy. They don't sell your data or anything, so get them now. Check them out at joinhoney.com slash short circuit. Back to the headphones. I have been obsessed with this song by Annie Lennox called Walking on Broken Glass. I'm pretty sure it's an 80s song. Ever since I listened to the Strong Songs podcast from uh, Kirk Hamilton, I both, he did an episode on this song and I've just been blasting it. Sorry, wife. Holy cow. With these things, they live up to the name, the extra bass. This song sounds almost like a dance remix. When the bass kicked in, it was just pulsing, driving. If you're a bass head, I think you're gonna like these. But more and more, I'm thinking these are probably great for the gym. They're IPX4 rated, and that means that they have no rating for dust, that's the X, but they do have a rating for water. In this case, it's a four, I believe that's out of nine. And the four means that they can withstand splashes from any direction, and that's basically just sweat. So it looks like they are geared towards gym goers. That, that actually makes sense. It kind of looks like it could get splashed and survive. It almost has like a boat finish. They look like they could plop out of my ear and land on a dumbbell and like, they're gonna be okay. Someone else could maybe step on them. They, they might survive. And this case is just gonna easily slip into a bag. I think these are gonna be great for the gym, especially since they're so isolating. You can drown out the music that the gym is playing above your music pretty easily with these. Let's see how loud they go. Yeah, they go loud enough. Louder than I would go for a healthy listening. You're gonna have no problem hearing your music over top of ambient noises at the gym and stuff like that. They don't have uh, fins. Let's look what else is in the box. There's only this. 
instructions, an adapter for USB-C to A, and then more ear tips. A lot of athletic-centered in-ears will give you optional silicone fins that you can put on, and they kind of nest into this part of your ear. These didn't come with that, but I think it's okay. Like, they feel pretty sturdy, and it's because they use the same um, design mentality as these ones, which is the three-point contact kind of system in your ear, and they're really stable. You could do box jumps, you could head bang, you could fall off your skateboard and, uh, you know, hit something because you weren't listening properly with these and they're probably going to stay in. Your shoes might fly off though. Similar to the higher priced premium version, the case, it does have these little indicators which I really like, red and white, as is also indicated on the headphone, so it's just a no-brainer when you want to put them back in the case, and they snap in really nicely too. Uh-oh, my tip fell off. Just the tip though. Let's listen to some more tracks. They are punchy on the bass. You're gonna love these if you like EDM and stuff, but when I'm listening to non-dance content, they're still good headphones. They're really articulate. I'm noticing things that I might not notice when I'm listening in my car, for example. Now, as for the high frequencies, which can be harsh on crappier headphones, if I listen to some rock and roll, a lot of the times those guitars can sound harsh on crappier headphones. On, on these, they still sound nice and clear. Not bad at all, they don't hurt. And these, I would say, are competent on the higher frequencies. But are they the best? I mean, do you think that these have the same sound quality as these ones for $100 more? Let's find out. Okay, yeah, you can see there's a low profile, they're rounder, kind of sweet, sleek looking. Yeah, these sound different. They do sound better. They sound different. It's not just an EQ thing. The more expensive ones have an app, a companion app, and there's various EQs, presets, and you have the ability to make your own, and then you can kind of, you know, adjust the music as you like it. These ones don't have a companion app. They have no ability to change the EQ, so. I thought maybe they just had a bassier EQ applied to them and locked in. That doesn't seem to be the case. They sound quite a bit different than the more expensive ones, but they do sound good still. These are pretty comfortable. They come with several different ear tips and you should change them out because if you don't get a good seal in your ear canal, you're not gonna feel that really good bass. You need that. Three different sizes on here in addition to what they came with. So you'll probably be pretty covered. And they're the standard ones that you can you can buy replacements on Amazon and stuff like that. Uh, one note that I found about the Google Assistant functionality is that you cannot hail the Assistant using just your voice. You have to hold and press the button down for the Assistant to get hailed. Um, that doesn't mean that it blocks the voice. Like if I just say blank Bluegill, my phone will still hear it and pick it up, but I'm talking to this microphone. Other differences include the Bluetooth, actually. These have Bluetooth 4.2 rather than Bluetooth 5. Um, I mean, functionally, it's probably gonna be okay, but theoretically, Bluetooth 5 has double the bandwidth and four times the range. So depending on your use case, you might have some kind of deficiency there, but you're probably gonna be okay. The advertised quick charge speeds are different. So if you charge, the premium ones for 10 minutes, you get 90 minutes of playback. If you charge these ones for 10 minutes, you only get 60 minutes of playback. I mean, that's still a pretty sweet stat. I like that spec, it's good. It's just not as good as these though. All in all though, I think for $130 right now, these are really good. If they had been included in my roundup of like 50 wireless headphones that I did a few months back, um, they would have been the best in the bunch, I think. Of course, they're more expensive. What was the limit on that one? 50 bucks? Well, these are a lot more. They're almost triple that. They're 130 bucks. I think they're awesome. I think if, if you're new to audio, these might be the best headphones you've ever had. If you have the extra 100 bucks, these are fantastic and they have active noise canceling. They're sick on a plane. Like if you have expensive headphones, if you have planar magnetics that you wear in your bed at night, and then you want to go to the gym and have something that like doesn't kill you, like I have this pair of Truly Wireless that are garbage and I don't even want to wear them when I go to the gym. These aren't going to do that to you. If you're used to good headphones and you just want something not that expensive to wear to the gym, these are going to be great. I think these are really good all-rounders and I recommend them. Thanks for watching Short Circuit today. You guys should subscribe because I'm going to be reviewing some other really expensive headphones from Odyssey, Planar Magnetics, in a coming episode. Or maybe two episodes because we do have two pairs.